Portofino Group, South Point Charette, June 16th to June 21st, 1993. Thomas Kramer, TK, was invited to a New Year's party in the early 90s by the Trump family, founders of Williams Island. He visited Miami Beach for the first time in his life and saw opportunity calling. During the 1980s, he was a trader with offices on the 102nd floor in the World Trade Center and saw Battery Park Plaza, the southern tip of Manhattan, being transformed from a stagnant landfill to a prosperous residential and office waterfront community. He recognized that South Point could be the Battery Park Plaza of Miami Beach. South Point is a unique area on the southern tip of Miami Beach that enjoys exceptional commanding water views on three sides. It is conveniently located near major tourist attractions and one of the most important U.S. seaports. It is very well connected to downtown Miami and the third largest international airport via the MacArthur Causeway. TK immediately recognized South Point's potential and helped by the SNL crisis and collapsing real estate prices, TK began acquiring as many properties as possible. By the end of the buying spree, TK had gained control of more than 45 of the 80 plus acres that comprise South Point. TK's focus was on the Prime Bay and waterfront parcels. To execute his vision and make his dream a reality, TK organized a collaborative design workshop called a charrette with nine of the leading architectural firms, city planners, marine experts, politicians, and concerned citizens at Joe's Stone Crab, one of America's most popular restaurants. On June 21, 1993, renowned architect and city planner Elizabeth Plater Zyberg opened the South Point Charette. This marked the opening of an intensive six-day conference for which Joe's Stone Crab opened its door to top international architects, local and national politicians, and all citizens. Mr. Kramer first came to Miami Beach a year and a half ago. Since then, he has committed himself to South Point's future. Thomas understands that with the properties the Portofino Group is aggregating, he can have an enormous positive effect on all of South Beach. So it is appropriate that he convened 10 of the best architectural firms to propose how to do this. Those six days in June 1993 changed the destiny of South Point and the city of Miami Beach forever. In order for the architects to fully understand the unique qualities of South Point, TK showed the land he acquired via a bird's eye view tour from one of the penthouses of South Point Tower. At that time, this was the only high-rise condominium in the South Point neighborhood. TK then took the architects on a bus tour of the area so they could observe firsthand the current architectural and social state of South Beach. TK believed he could inspire and execute a turnaround for the blighted area of South Point. Over the years, South Point had slipped from being the first city center of Miami Beach in the early 20th century. Originally, it had housed a dog racetrack, a huge gasoline storage facility, army barracks, a meat factory, and the city's only affordable housing. The 100,000 people who found refuge on the beaches as a result of the Marielto boat lift in the 80s were responsible for the high crime rates, vagrancy, the dilapidated buildings, and vacant lots that were so representative of the area in the early 90s. As a result, the area was designated a redevelopment district. And I think that South Beach is kind of a uh, sleeping uh, giant, one of the greatest opportunities uh, with uh, miles of beachfront and shoreline. The amount of land that Mr. Kramer has put together is, is very large and in a very prominent. I mean, he has a very strong agenda, but I think he is seeing, by seeing the range of ideas here, that there are many possibilities. This is uh, not only a dream site, but actually can be realized in a, in a very fantastical way. Well, I think this is an important project for Miami Beach because uh, it is bound to shape the image of the city. It is the most prominent uh, real estate, the tip of the island, and because of its scale, uh, it will tell a story about what, what Miami Beach is all about. And someone came up with this kind of a total community approach. We're going to really bring in the best minds in the world, and we're going to look to see what, what's best, not only for the developer, 
but for the community. So we're all going to look forward to uh, the recommendations that, that come forth. Uh, I pledge to you to do whatever is necessary uh, to make this uh, all work and make, uh, make this all happen. And uh, we're ready to go. I think when you're talking about a piece of property as large as, as we're talking about here and the potential impact that it has on the entire community, the openness of this process, that is the, the, the willingness to allow people to have input, I think is, is, is extremely important in today's society. I mean, it really gives people an opportunity to have some input so that we all come together with a general agreement, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Thomas Kramer will begin our presentation this evening. He brought us together for, the, for an intense experience of receiving information, speculating on the future, and drawing. Ladies and gentlemen, may I, may I introduce Thomas Kramer. Thank you very much, Liz. And welcome, everyone, to the final presentation of the South Point Charette. For those who just joining us, this evening is a result of six days of creative energy and intensive planning the likes of South Florida has never seen. Through this collective effort, they were able to create a forum of ideas and give every participant a sense of ownership in the final product. The architectural design teams have focused on community needs such as residential units, retail space, and of course hotels. Since last Wednesday, this group of professionals have worked morning, evenings, and sometimes late through the night to deliver their creative design solutions for our community. This evening we will be seeing brief slide presentations of nine designs for South Point produced by ten firms in the last six days. The firm of Sandy and Babcock, the Seeger Architectural Partnership, the Coconut Grove firm of Bermeo, Azamil and Partners, the firm of Abdel Wahid El Wakil Associates, Michael Graves Architects, Siskovich Architects, DPZ Architects, and Todd Tregesh of STA Architects will be presenting. I'd like to show you quick quickly, which is the famous last word of architects. We want to keep as many streets and vistas of existing Miami open to the water as possible. We have no buildings uh, crossing the street to the water, and when we block one avenue coming in the north-south direction. We recognize Ocean Drive as one major street, and we carry it further south and link it up to Washington Street, so you have a continuous drive there. The existing park will remain here in place and the parking lot that's there with crawdaddies would go away and instead you would park along the street like normal people do and everyone would have access to the park. I'm very grateful to Joanne Bass, Stephen Savitz of Joe Stonecrab's restaurant for their hospitality and um, I want to show you our own <laughs> And also my special thanks go to all Miami Beach City officials, government leaders, and citizens who have helped us make this charrette possible. A special thank also to Senator Connie Mack, who flew down from Washington to review our progress. It has been my privilege to have been a part of this South Beach charrette, and I thank you all very much. Thank you. TK's final vision proposed a complete overhaul and numerous upgrades that would transform South Point into a world-class luxury location the likes of San Tropez, Portofino, or Monaco. After 14 years of titanic struggle with politicians, lawyers, and developers, living through countless lawsuits, spending millions in revising plans and on legal fees, a good part of TK's original vision is today Miami Beach's reality. TK came to town and transformed a slum into one of America's most sought-after locations.